Hi, welcome to Beginning Engineers. Today I'm going to be talking about ERP systems. Basically, everything about your company in a digital space. First off, what is an ERP system? Well, ERP stands for Enterprise Resource Planning. It's the management of core business processes. Typically, people refer to software, though, when they say ERP. I don't think I've ever heard someone say, that manager is doing some ERP, or his function is ERP. Maybe people say it, but any time I've ever heard ERP mentioned in industry, it's always referring to software. ERP software aggregates real-time data from all the different areas of your business, and this allows users, anyone using the software, to manage those areas more effectively. Just think about a business. This image on the slide shows you just how comprehensive and complex a business can be. Even if you're only an engineer or you're in one function, you have to think there's so many other positions and operations that make the company function. Whether it's sales, procurement, or human resources, there are so many people involved in making a company successful, and you use ERP software to help manage that. So at this point, you might be asking, why? Certainly businesses existed before modern technology, computers that run software. That's true, but now more than ever, think about all the data involved in every aspect of a business, whether it's the transaction of goods and services for money, or just the movement of inventory in a warehouse. And as the days go by, our technology is getting even better at collecting data. Just think about all the light sensors and the flip switches on a production line. And even think about some large companies that are actually putting movement trackers on their employees. Well, all this data can be stored and recalled electronically for use in reports, payments, forecasting, anything you can use data for. And the benefit of ERP software is that it unifies all this data in an electronic, easily recallable format. So think about before computers. This would be written down maybe not even written down, but you would have to go collect it from a notebook. And even when computers first came out, you might only store data from one type of the business, or you might have data on separate computers that weren't connected. But now all that data is in one piece of software, accessible from many computers. And with most modern ERP softwares, it's in the cloud. So it's data stored electronically in a server somewhere that you can pull from any electronic device, even your phone. Why is ERP software beneficial to engineers? Well, as an engineer, you'll likely be involved in projects that involve procurement, supply chain, production, distribution, sometimes even accounting or HR, or even sales. The longer you work as an engineer, the more likely it is you'll do projects for other departments, and it helps you grow as an engineer. And by being able to use and understand ERP software, even at a basic level, you can better interface with these other departments, collect, analyze, and report their data. For example, when I was an engineer, I had to use the RMA, Return Material Authorization feature, in N4, one of the larger ERP software providers, to process returns in the quality department. I'll give a few more examples. Say you are looking to improve your company's supply chain with various approaches on how to schedule and purchase shipments for your manufactured products. To analyze a lot of this data, you're going to need some ERP software to pool the different things. For example, which suppliers do you purchase from? What logistics companies do you use? What's the amount of time it takes from purchase to delivery? You could store this all in Excel or even write it down. But if you have ERP software at your company, someone in your procurement department or supply chain department has been recording this data for years. And if you know how to use the ERP, you can pull that data into another tool and start analyzing it. Another example, imagine you are beginning an in-depth PFEMA or DFEMA, that's process failure modes effects analysis or design failure modes effects analysis. By the way, I have a video going over PFEMA if you want more detail on that. But say you're beginning an in-depth PFEMA or DFEMA process for your operation, but you're new to the organization and don't really have a good place to start. By pulling data from the risk analysis and or product details module of your local ERP, 
you could basically have a good high-level overview of which products and processes would be best to start with based on some already determined risk analysis. Or even if it's just a product module, it will at least give you a high-level map of all the products you have. A good place to start when doing a PFEMA or DFEMA. Let's go into some basics of what you can do with ERP software. And I'm only going to touch on a few very basic things. ERP has so many different modules, so many different versions. You could talk about ERP software for days. But here's an example I've dealt with before. In operations, you track things in an ERP system using movement codes, at least in a lot of the big ones. For example, the below movement codes are used in SAP. SAP is one of the leading ERP software providers. Talk to the IT department in a lot of warehouses or a lot of manufacturing operations and they'll refer to their data and movement codes. Here are some ones I hear the most often. A 101 is a goods receipt. Without a purchase order, this would be a 501. Technically 101 and 501, but you'll hear people say 101. A 161 is the return for a purchase order. 261, goods issue for an order. So if you're going to consume product to make a manufactured good, you issue those components on a 261 movement code. A 551, scrapping from unrestricted use stock, it's a scrap code. 601, 601, goods issue for delivery. So this is when you are shipping something out. You will often find too that these movement codes pair with other types of codes, like XK01. XK01 for the creation of a vendor master. So this would be a list stored in your ERP of all the vendors your company has bought from. These codes pair together to describe the operations of your company. For example, you would have a 101, so a goods receipt, and that would have a vendor on it. That vendor would tie to the vendor master stored in your system to say what vendor did you buy this material from. And as you collect more and more of that data, you have more things to analyze and improve on. If you're using an ERP software, you'll be using a variety of screens that are inside of modules, different functional areas of the ERP. And if you haven't worked with ERP software before, chances are your experience with software is something made for the general public. And these companies focus on good user interfaces. Your Snapchats, your Facebooks, your Twitters, these things focus on having a good user experience. And although this is changing for ERP companies, they typically have been industry software, enterprise software. So the screens are very basic looking. Think back to software you used in the 90s. That is what many ERP software screens still look like today. Very square looking, pretty bland color schemes. But something you have to understand, why ERP software is so valuable and so powerful even if it looks a little dated, is because of what it's doing. You're on Snapchat, you're on Facebook, you might be posting a status or uploading some pictures. It's not a lot of data. You may be looking at a lot of other people's data, but even still, on a user-by-user -user basis, it's not a lot of information compared to ERP softwares, which are storing thousands and thousands and millions and millions, depending on the size of the company, points of data. Think about all this data, all your receipts, all your manufacturing, all your shipments, all your purchases, all your interactions with potential customers, all your accounting. The more modules of an ERP software a company has, the more information they're storing. So these ERP softwares may look a little bland, but they're calculating data and using data from millions of data points. Something truly impressive. And the last point I want to touch on, I alluded to it earlier, is that when you're buying ERP software, it's very different from one customer to another. You may purchase 10 different modules, that is functional aspects of a business, or you may just purchase one. And every time the implementation, the setup of that software can be vastly different. You can go to one company that's using SAP, and it may look and act totally different than another company that's using SAP. So if you're new somewhere and want to learn about their ERP, ask what modules they use. This video has focused on ERP software, but contained within ERP and often other platforms that will interface it, you have all different types of software and acronyms that go with it. Here are some of the common ones you can hear most often. CRM, Customer Relationship Management. 
platforms that allow a company to track and record their interactions with potential and active customers. Salesforce is a leading CRM platform, NetSuite, CRM, etc. Many ERP companies will have a module that focuses on CRM, but in today's competitive world, you have whole entire companies just focused on the CRM element. WMS, Warehouse Management System. Software focused on managing and optimizing all logistics activities inside a warehouse. Things like organizing materials, planning shipments, and handling staffing. Things critical to moving goods. Northstar, 3PL Central, those are some big names you'll hear with WMS software. And just like with CRMs, many of the big ERP providers have a module dedicated to warehouse management. PLM, Product Lifecycle Management. Systems that manage multiple resources as they relate to products or services. These focus primarily on carrying a product from inception to retirement, so the entire life cycle of a product. Arena, Autodesk PLM, and many more focus on just this one aspect of a business. Now that you have a basic idea of what ERP software is and some of the functions, I'll end on key players. That way, if you hear one of these names, you'll know right away, oh, their ERP software, so you at least can have a conversation about it at a very high level. This is a list in approximate order currently based on revenue. SAP, FIS Global, Oracle, Fiserv, Intuit, Cerner Corporation, Microsoft, and N4. All these companies offer different modules to help businesses organize their operations or accounting or HR, or sales, and many more. And these are all very large companies with thousands, if not millions, of customers. Thank you so much for watching this Beginning Engineers video. I hope you now have a good idea of what ERP software is, why it's beneficial for companies, and how you may use it as an engineer. If you like this video, feel free to subscribe. Have a great day.